Hey everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this very special video, I'm joined by Greg Hildebrandt, um, one of my favorite artists of all time and one of the most popular fantasy artists um, ever. Um, Greg, thank you so much for being here. Sure, nice to be here. Again, I'm super excited and honored to have you here. Do you do a lot of virtual Zoom uh, no. interviews? I think this is maybe the second jane i think it's the second one i did one for uh you know san diego comic-con that's right people that's it i mean that's that's it so far you mm -hmm. is a second that that's exciting how was how was that experience uh at comic-con i i thought it was terrific uh you know we had fun talking you know uh, i i i knew of drew struzan's work of course but i'd never met him so we happened to we could shake hands with each other over you know uh disconnectedly yeah and it was nice it was a great conversation you know it was, was it yeah was it different um you know not being able to be in a a panel where you can actually see and hear people was that a little different yeah obviously it's different you know it's much more uh much disconnected physically obviously and there's a but i mean the conversation you know i don't think was shifted i mean people did their thing talked and picked it up and the mc carried it on you know it was, it was great it was it was terrific much like a lot of people in like the the 90s it was people were crazy for trading cards and this was the first card that i ever opened in in the 94 uh, marvel masterpiece pack and okay. i instantly knew i've never heard of uh, you or your brother this was the first time i've seen your work and i instantly became a fan that that deals with lighting and color you know what i mean uh, values and color and lighting you try, you, you figure out a setting, you know, and then that for us, that Tim and I and, and myself now alone, that establishes the, the, the palette, the color palette and, you know, and the lighting you want to use, you know? Mm -hmm. Was, was Wolverine a character that you were familiar with? Before I mean, you... uh, yeah, yeah, to the degree that I was here, I knew about the X-Men and uh, of course that's my, not my era, you know, you, you mm -hmm. gotta remember I was born in 1939. <laughs> So I grew up on comics in the in the in the 1940s and 50s. So by the time I got to the 60s, I was not really into comics. I hadn't looked at a comic book in probably since 19. I think Joe Kubert's tour comics. I don't know if you remember any of that. Joe Kubert's tour uh, from the you know the first 3D comic. Yeah, yeah, it sounds familiar. A little uh, before my time, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Joe was was one of my icons. I mean, once I had saw that book and saw some other work that he did, and I got to teach, able to teach at his school here in New Jersey too, for several oh, wow. years. But uh, I I wasn't really aware of comic characters or anything like that, you know. Uh, also, because I was involved in all kinds of other stuff. My career is all varied. All it's all over the place, you know. And comics is just a, I'm late come to doing comics in my career. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean. It it's a lot of people have discovered, you know, second, third careers um, in different stages of life. And so I, when I was doing some research on kind of your work, um, I was surprised to find out that you've done things outside of even before and after these trading cards, because, you know, oh. to me, I only, I've only seen this work of yours because that's sure. the one that, um, that attracts I, me. So yeah, um, I started like professionally in 1958 even as a kid, always interested, my brother and myself, we were just all over the place. We loved this. We, we wanted to be animators as young kids. That was our main love is animation. And we were planning to be at Disney's by the time we, you know, got the army out of the way and a bunch mm -hmm. of, you know, everything else. And then in special effects, I got interested in special effects too. And I did some of that at this film company, miniatures, building miniatures and stuff of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. The, the Marvel Masterpieces by 1994 is well along. You know, that's, I started professionally, like I say, in, in 1958. So there was like several careers up to that point. Mainly right. the, the one that put us on the map in terms of the global following was our work for the Lord of the Rings for Valentine Books. Mm. We did three calendars. I said, I want to do something in the comics. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea about comics. I mean, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I, I went to a comic store just to kind of check things out. And I started teaching at Joe's Kubert School, like I say. So I'd be talking to a lot of kids. What's happening? How's it going? They're showing me books. They're showing me. Then, then I found out about these the more contemporary characters. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That was by the, by the late 80s, early 90s. So and, and, and then Gene 
basically had Marvel send us all their their monthly books. So she, and she read them all, and she would inform me as to the history. And I'd say, well, who the hell is blah blah blah? Who the hell? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she would clue me in as to all these characters. What other research did you have to do if you weren't familiar with a character? You know, I mean, I'm assuming there are certain characters that you were familiar with, like Spider-Man. I mean, yeah, that big, big, big ones. Yeah. The yeah, big, yeah. Well, we just they Gene being the contact for me and has been for connecting with people. And they, mm. I, 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 you know, I'm not like totally isolated. I go out into the world too. But she would just request them to uh, Marvel to send us whatever information they had on these mm. particular characters. And they sent model sheets and you know and all that kind of stuff. To, yeah. To finally, show me the characters and. And then we sat with them. Tom DeFalco was the editor in chief at that at time, and and I just we walked. It was he was, was funny to me, not funny. It, it's surprising. I went there. I said to Jane, "I want to go do something in the comic." She said, "Fine." And then she called Stan Lee, and I met Stan sometime before, in when he was doing Epic Magazine, and because he did an article on my brother and myself, and I had seen him for a number of years. She called Stan and asked him, said, told Stan that I wanted to get into the comics and do something. He said, well, here's the number to call. And he gave Gene the number. And, and he was in California by this time. He had left to go, you know, develop film at yeah. this time in the early 90s. And, and so she called over there and, and talked to Terry Stewart, who was the then head at Marvel. And no, no, not Terry. Terry didn't come in yet. Joe Calamari. Do you know that name at all? No, this doesn't sound familiar. He was the head. He was the head of Marvel. Okay, Calamari, and we got there, and Joe sat in his office, and he had a can of squid on his desk. Oh, Calamari, okay, right? all right. <laughs> I, I'm noticing a theme. It's a comic book name to me, you know. Right. Joe, is he a is he a villain? <laughs> yeah, right. he was a good guy. So he t- takes us out. We meet Tom DeFalco. Tom takes us all around, you know, showing us everything, and I was like in awe, and I was really prepared to start at rock bottom if I had to, even though I had three careers already. It was famous for Lord of the Rings and the Star Wars poster. Yeah. I was ready, willing, and able to sweep floors if necessary. Right. Okay. And he, and they basically said, well, what do you want to do? I said, I have no idea. I want to do something here. I'm not sure what it is. And he, they came back the next day, called Gene, Tom said, well, how about a Marvel masterpiece set? And I said, fantastic. And now my brother and I have been working separately for a number of years now. Right. We, I called Tim and we got together and we did the set together. It was something like 150 something cards, I think. Yeah, like 160. It, it's a lot. A lot. Well, yeah. I was laying them all out already. I started to draw them and then I called Tim. So I had them all laid out and connected with Tim. And we literally painted, they had a deadline, of course. We painted 160 cards in six months. Wow. So you figure it's like. Yeah, yeah. What did you, what did you do to prevent from going crazy? Like, I mean, there, there, there's a thrill to it in a way. I mean, again, like I say, I don't know if I can pull this off now. You know, you, you, you slow down a little bit. Yeah. But there's an excitement to kind of like, you know, like you're you're at the starting line and the gun goes off, boom, and you take yeah. off. Yeah. And you do a lot of stuff that normally you wouldn't do in a way, you know, because the the speed is there and the adrenaline's running yeah, and you're just plowing ahead. And, and in a sense, it's what, that's the way comics have always been done. Right. You know, yep. in, the, in, that in a rush, <laughs> in a rush, in a death, here's the yeah. deadline, boom. And in the, rule number one, never miss a deadline. So that was key. That's what I hear. Yeah. Night call. Well, let's do it at night. So the first decision that Tim and I do, we went through all the characters. Yeah. And we say, okay, Daytime, nighttime, firelight, interior light, blue light, lightning. We determine the lighting setups and what times of day and the locations. Okay. So like this, forest, uh, you know, okay, saber tooth. Let's stick him in, a wood, in the woods, backlight him. It will be a discussion about lighting in the setup. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's like you're designing a film in a way. You're, you're, you're basically doing cinematography, lighting, co- color. Uh, uh, you know, art direction, everything. And, and it's all in a discussion form and we're making sketches and notes and everything like that. So then once I get the, the, the final sketches, now we get a model, we got models, we got bodybuilders. To Interesting, post okay. And uh, 
and we pose them not in costume they just put in you know, their little skivvies on yeah yeah you know what i'm saying yeah and like them according to the sketch that we had already developed together interesting like with this one top cool light we knew it was going to be coming down from the top see the bluish light in yeah. back with warm suns of rays of light coming from the back so we understood that whole setup already we 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 by this point we had worked so long together we knew when we'd say back sunlight we knew exactly what colors those should be yeah if that overhead cool fill-in light we knew what those colors would be and then we transfer we'd line up a bunch of the we, these were painted on masonite so we we called the lumber yard the lumber yard cut them all for us masonite or i should say duron boards a really high quality pressed wood panel basically and how, how big were these in real life they varied like this one was small it was probably only about that big oh okay and then some, some would get to be you know big size like that i see okay and depending on which character that maybe we, we they were discussing maybe doing posters of them too mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah so we're then we we after we gesso you paint white gesso on the on the brown wood masonite sand it all down nice and smooth and then start to transfer them you take your a xerox copy of your drawing tape it onto the board with a piece of carbon paper underneath transfer paper with a ballpoint pen you trace your drawing onto the white surface and then you know what i mean it's just like a like a carbon copy yeah 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 what you're making and I know carbon copy is probably way before your time too. Right? I was alive when we <laughs> had that for credit cards. Okay. And then kind of like determine, all right, these were these scenes, there was like say a dozen that would be in the sunlight. Yeah. Outside on a blue day with white clouds and blue sky. Okay. I don't know how many there were. I don't remember right now. But yeah. we'd line them all up and we'd mix up the color breakdowns for the sky, which would be maybe five or six values for the clouds, five or six values for the blue sky. And then we'd paint all the skies. Like, you know, huh. you, you heard stories about these people that knock out paintings, families off and, and wherever. Yeah. You, know, you do the water, you do the sky, I do the trees, you do the, and we, we, we kind of like mass produce them in that sense. Interesting. In order to meet the deadline. Yeah, yeah. So like that, yeah, yeah. Because whenever I look at this Wolverine and I look at the Sauron, it makes it seem like they're in the same, Set, yeah they're literally like the same setting same area same time of yeah. day yeah and that would be lined up so we would have done those two kind of get in line with a bunch of other things if you look for other ones where you see where it's a hotter light warmer light fire light you know what i'm saying yeah and that's the way we did that and so and we'd keep the paint you know we work with acrylic and we developed a scheme many years before that how to keep the paint wet and working because acrylic you know dries yeah like yeah right you know we have like tupperware containers <laughs> then we put the paint in and spray with with a mister to keep it wet Moist, and working yeah. and, and it stays wet and working for months that way so that's how we got through the tough card set wow like and yeah. along with that aside from the terry strip we were, we were working on we did a There's couple of there, there were several posters that we did in for marvel at the same time we were doing these training card sets so did they, and, did they just think that you weren't busy enough or did they, they just really love your work that are like, we want to put it on everything? Yeah, they loved it. They loved it. They, they, they were really enthusiastic, extremely. They were fantastic. You know, they were great to work with. And I loved it. But uh, we, we worked with the ed editors on the card set. Uh, Bob Budiansky was an artist, and he had done some Marvel comics, and now he was the editor on this particular card set. So I'd meet with Bob. Tim and I would meet, or I, Gene and I would go in and meet. Mm -hmm. And I discuss each character with him, you know, and work it out. And he'd be pushing, and and I got into us in terms of the style, so to speak. We, I determined ahead of time. Tim and I had a discussion. Let's make this the colors as strong and as bold as we possibly can. You know, let, don't be too subtle. You know, I figure, well, you know, this is comic. This yeah. is comics. Yeah, you got to push Bam. the colors. Yeah push the colors of your palette your chroma up you know yeah and if anybody i was looking i mean there's so many great artists even back then in the 90s there were fantastic amount of artists in the comics by this point mm -hmm. that i kind of like looked at well who's the who's the founding father of Mar you know modern marvel comics in terms of the graphic it was jack kirby so you know and that's 
I said, let's look at Jack Kirby. Let's just not, yeah. not to emulate him, not to copy him, you know, but just to yeah. kind of like be inspired by him, so to speak. And that wasn't like looking to be it, make it look like his work, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that would be the thing that I would look at to juice me up, you know? Yeah. That's funny you mentioned that because on one of the cards, there was a quote that you, you said that you were, um, you were trying to copy or emulate a Jack Kirby action pose. And yeah. so I guess you were also trying to, you were also inspired by just like the, the in your face. Yes. Bold, this, yeah. you know, the whole thing, the big block. Yeah, love it. Yep. Thing. That whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that became it. And I hadn't done anything of this nature in terms of the exaggerated anatomy, you know? Yeah. More or less we were, you know, you're, you're, you're getting into more exaggerated kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Which it was fun. I, I, I was one of the high points as far as a project is concerned. And like I say, again, the, the amount of work never scared Tim or me. It was like we were obsessed maniacs to start off with from the beginning as kids. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. too, much was never, too much was never enough, you know? And that's a good thing when it's art you're working with. Obviously, it's a bad thing for others, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah, well, you know, they, I guess they loved your work so much they had you do, you know, more than just the Marvel Master, but you did like a, a Flare, Flare X-Men card set too. Like, yeah. You yeah, we kept it up, and then but then, as long as the uh, the market held up, and then it just crashed. Cards went out the window. There was no more cards anymore. You know. Yeah, yeah. And it was kind of sad, but and then I did one painted graphic novel with them. They wanted us to do an X Men twenty ninety nine book, mm -hmm. and did that, and that was a new experience. So that was fantastic. They were they just rolled. I going back though when I got there, and I told you when I went up there for the first day. And met Mr. Calamari and then Tom DeFalco. Mm -hmm. Tom was interesting because he, you got to get, I didn't know this, but there was a distinction with artists in the business of pop culture art, whether that be illustration or comic art, that illustrators were somehow up here and comic artists were down here. Really? Strong conversation. Many artists in the 30s and 40s would never admit they worked in the comics because that was always looked down on as a demeaned subculture medium that right, right. In, in older movies if you look at scene you see some older films they want to show a stupid guy he's sitting in a corner yes. reading a comic book yeah right they, so it was right. always and they, there was pejorative it's like what well, it's merely a comic book cutout character you yeah. know yeah. It would be like that. Yeah, right. It's like a stereotype of like a nerd, right? But, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. And none of those people who made those critical comments had any concept of the complexity of the sophistication of the art form. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, yeah. It, so it's a complex medium that demands a lot. And so I got there and Tom's leading is taking us all around. And after like 20 or 30 minutes, what the hell ever was, he says, great, can I ask you a question? He said, what are you doing here? And, you know, like. What did he mean by that? What do you mean by that? And he said, well, you're an illustrator. Why'd you come here? I said, Tom, I, you, I don't get it. I mean, this is a high art form to me. It's been a high art form since I was a little kid. It's one of the great art forms. You know, it's, it, I, but. So that, that I didn't know that up to that point that that, that huh. whole conversation existed, you know. Yeah, I knew, that, I knew that comics were always demeaned and put down. They were comic book burnings in 1955. I was unaware of any of that shit going on. Excuse my English. Yeah, no, not at all. Because I'm a kid in school. Oh, it was comic, and we go by the soda shop where we bought our comics in the day, and we got there to get our EC comics. Oh, which uh -huh. at that yeah. point, they were it for me. I mean, that was. My last total obsession with comics was over the EC comics. The mm. science fiction, science fantasy, crime, you know, Tales from the Crypt, The Bolt of Horror, yeah. and all that yep. stuff. Yep. And we went there to get our monthly comics, EC comics, and there was nothing on the racks. I really love this picture of you, by the way. Oh, this one? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was a, I think that was a copy I did. I tried to challenge myself. Oh, can you talk about that a little bit? Tim and I painted that, the original, in 36 hours. What? That's how long it took oh, us to paint that. Because there was a, the, the, we got a call from the studio handling the job they, they, in New York City. I live in Jersey across the you know, river from New York. Mm -hmm. and I, Tim and I came through with a painting for the studio once overnight. 
for Young Frankenstein, the Mel Brooks film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't get used, but we literally painted a picture overnight. And that stuck in their memory, these guys. That was what, 73, 1973, I think, that film came out. And then we got famous, Tim and I, for illustrating The Lord of the Rings. Right. A global, not, that's what put us on the map. Yeah, yeah. The global fan following thing. And so I'm working on my own story, Ursharac, mm -hmm. a fantasy novel, which we tried to get off the ground as a film. It didn't make it. Uh, and I get a call from the studio that we had done this, you know, Young Frankenstein job. Yeah. And he said, you got to help us out. We got a film here. It's a science fiction film. The, the a small, small movie. They didn't know it. They hadn't seen the film yet. These guys didn't know anything about the movie. Oh, really? Nothing. Not a word. They, and so no they, they were asking you to create something from nothing. No, no, no. They, they, they called and they said, we've got a film. The, the, the director is not entirely happy with the poster that he has for the film. You, you, got, you guys got to help us out. So I said, okay. So we got on the train, went into the city, went over. They told us, showed us Tom Young's poster. You know yep. the Tom yep. right. He did the original. Right. That was the first one. And I'm looking at it. I'm saying, well, that's great. What, what, what do you want? Yeah, what's wrong with it? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with this? And they said, well, the director, I said, what do they want us to, what do, what do they want us to do with it? And he said, the director wants you to paint it more comic booky, Keep the same basic setup. Do your thing with it or something. You know, mm -hmm. a little bit there. But he wants it more comic booky. So Tim and I, they gave don't us a love. Don't you love direction like that? Yeah. No, that was it. That was as, that's as far as it went. Really, it was the only words they gave us. Wow. And so you know, they gave us a bunch of black and whites out of the film, you know, Darth Vader and everything. And I said, oh, wow, who's this guy with the helmet? And they said, oh, I don't know, Man in the Iron Mask or something. Because mm -hmm. they hadn't seen the film, these guys. And they were great right. guys. The two, the, the two guys handling the thing. They were fantastic. And, and so we got on the train with this reference they gave us with the poster, Tom Young thing. And, and Tim and I are discussing, what do you mean? I wonder what they mean, comic bookie. <laughs> they, they don't mean ink outline with flat colors, because that's what comic books were colored like back then. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't mean that. It's a, God, they want a painting, but. Yeah, you're trying to figure out what he's, what he's really trying to say. Yeah, what, what is it? So then the kind of we deduce, well, color and contrast. Because Tom Jung's was very subtle. Yeah, it's very, yeah. It's very. Mostly dark, very, yeah, very. Dark muted. and subtle. Yeah. And I figure, well, well, more zap up the contrast, you know, the color in the, in the value the, the uh, contrast of warm and cool, warm in the foreground, cool in the background. Yeah, you know, yeah. That, 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 you know, that thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we painted that in 36 hours. That's... And then years go by, and Gene and I are talking, and Gene said, I wonder, I wonder if you could paint that in 36 hours again by yourself. Oh, like, the, like recently? Yeah. Like, like in the last that couple of years? Couple, last year, whenever this was. Yeah. And, she, and I said, oh, let me see. So I painted it in 36 hours. That's what I ended up with. <laughs> and then, and then that's the that's your shirt with all the paint that you were yeah, yeah. You doing it. I, so right now, I'm painting. You know, I, I I keep my painting clothes on all day. Yeah, long. yeah. No, it's great. Um, wow. What? So 36 hours. Yep. You hours. did you take a break at all? Like, well, what? the way that we worked and when we did the job for them for the studio was that yeah, we got home by the time we got back home. And I grabbed a couple of people, my first wife, then wife, to pose. I shot Polaroid shots for my model shots, you know, to get the lighting right and everything. Yeah, yeah. And by the time we got that done and got the sketch to the layout drawn, it was probably one o'clock in the morning by that point, you know, because it was a whole day affair. And yeah. then so one of us went to sleep, took a nap, and the other guy started painting. And I can't remember who exactly it was. Right now. Oh, I see. Uh huh. And then we go back and forth like that for a while. I took a nap, then and Tim worked for a while, and then at the end, for the last ten hours or so, we both worked on it together. And it, and I say worked on it together because the painting was a good size, you know. Yeah. Okay. I was big. gonna say like if it was only like this big, how were you both, you know? <laughs> so it was good size. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we we had it set up in the middle, and Tim sat on one side, I sat on the other side, and we have our palette in the middle between. Yeah. So we're both literally painting at the same time, you know, into the palette. Yeah, yeah. We did that for all the Lord of the Rings art in, in, in the Marvel trading card set. Those were smaller paintings. So all we did there was just, we sat next to each other and handed them back and forth to each other. Mm -hmm. Then we'd paint on it for a while, then I'd paint on it for a while. Yeah. You know? Like that. Right.
that is that's really that's a great story is it uh when you were doing this one did you feel uh that it was did you realize that like oh doing this by myself was easier or harder or did you feel like well it, it was easier from the point of view of i already knew the whole setup already I'd done that's true and, right right uh -huh. and i knew exactly what colors i used i remember the colors i used back then really? then when you're when you're doing it for the first time say back so what how intense should you get with the color it's an analysis mm -hmm. process right. not well ultramarine blue and thalocyanine blue and dioxazine pearl so you know you're working out all your color palette trying to figure it out you know, okay blah, blah, blah. yeah and so but i knew all that already so i had to go through all that see what i'm saying so you was more kind of like you were it was i guess just going down memory lane and you because you, know, you felt a little more comfortable already, yeah like okay yeah 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 i mean you know it, it well i mean i don't know if it was more comfortable because it's like it was a challenge to see if I could pull it off again, just from the point of view of uh, what, you know, what, will it be as good or will it be worse? <laughs> well, how do, what do you think? Nah, I don't, I, look, well, that was, yeah, no, I, I, I'm never satisfied with anything I do. So, you know, there's always, there's aspects of it that I find successful, but overall, you know, I'm very critical. Sure of myself and the work and it's you're always on this quest yeah for to be better excellence. to do yeah to do for more excellence. yeah and and it's like a carrot that's the proverbial carrot that's you're you know the, the rabbit's chasing that's yeah suspended up in front of yep. you yep you know you're driven to go after excellence but intellectually you know you'll never achieve it at least right. that's what i feel yeah Some yeah obviously don't think that way but that's kind of like that's the way i am you well, know? that's what your brain tells you, but your heart tells you to to keep going, right? Keep at it. Yeah. Keep at it. Keep, you'll get it. You'll get it. Keep at it. But, you know, everything I do, I approach with a great deal of enthusiasm. I don't care what the hell it is. Yeah. You know, there's it's exciting. You know, there's a blank thing in front of you, a piece of paper to start off with. Holy mackerel, you got to fill this thing up. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? You don't know what's going to happen, you know? Yeah. And that's the thrill of it. You don't know how the whole thing's going to work out. You know, it may, yeah. it may be a, a disaster. It may not be. <laughs> That's funny you mentioned that because I normally don't do these uh, virtual interviews. I am not a, I am an introvert by yeah. nature. Like I do not enjoy social interaction. Yep. Um, but I gotcha. Yeah. So I figured, you know, uh, if people want to, if they accept and they say yes to talk to me, I'm going to do it. If they say no, then I'm just going to call it and say I tried. Um, <laughs> yeah, but there you go. Uh, so no, what, oh, if, if uh, Marvel were to approach you again and say, hey, do you want to do another Marvel card trading set? Would you do it? Hello? Greg? <laughs> uh, I think it froze, Greg. Can you hear me? Wow, I can't believe that happened right when I asked that question. Uh, if Marvel were to ask you to do another trading card set, would you do it? Well, yeah, well, they did. And wait, what? They did, but we couldn't work out the right number. W when, when, when did they ask you that? I did, so I did a couple of them for them two years ago. And then they wanted to do a whole trading card set, but they just could not come up with the, uh, the amount of sure, money. Sure, sure. Yeah, needed, yeah. Needed to spend. Uh, it would have taken me alone a year and a half. Yeah, right. You know, at least a year and a half. And they just would not, they could not come up with the, yeah. enough money. So wow. That's... I would have I would have loved it. I would have totally been into it completely. Right, right. It. Yeah, yeah. But whatever. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. It's like the answer is yes, but. Yeah, right. right. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah, because I, um, I was a part of me was always wondering because they don't always release Marvel masterpiece cards. I, I guess they've, you know, they, they skip a few years or sometimes they just do, don't do it for a long period of time. Yeah. And then they started bringing it back. And I was like, Oh, I wonder if they're going to do something with artists who have done this before as like a, you know, like a anniversary thing or an homage or something like that. And um, yeah. no, that I was just curious if. No, I they, 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 they they wanted to, but they just could never come up with enough money. Mm. So, you know, there were the people that Gene was working with were very enthusiastic and I met them 
the the art director and everything and the uh, and they were very enthused and excited but uh, they couldn't get the uh, yeah couldn't get the money i hear you jean's here you should explain why right because jean's is talking she's explaining we, we, okay i'm gonna stay out of your show no oh. please please okay hey, come over come over okay. I'll you know over. i'll come over for a second you, you can, we can't see ourselves on your screen but okay I'm, but i can see you yeah yeah can you see me okay i, I can yes Okay, good. So the, uh, do you mind? Do you mind just kind of lowering yourself a little bit so I can see your face? There you uh, go. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Hello. Okay, so the thing basically really was that a lot of people don't realize Greg's process because there's a lot of artists that uh, go from their head, just from their head, and that's fine. It you know maybe it's half the amount of time, but that's not Greg's process. So Greg will do, you know, maybe for one trading card from the masterpieces set. 10 sketches, 15 sketches before he's really happy mm -hmm. with the one he wants to paint. Okay, then he's gotta get a model. In that model, he's gonna put them in a costume and he's gonna set that up so that his lighting is exactly what he sketched. Yeah. Then he's gonna do a finished sketch, then he's gonna paint the painting. And so his process is so much longer than most artists. And I tried to explain that to Rebecca. I was like, okay, guys, listen, you're asking, they started out with 80 cards. I said, okay. They said, well, how about 100? I said, okay. I said, you know, the original masterpieces was 158 cards. So that's what you're going to want, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, Gene. And I said, okay, good. And they actually offered me a third of what Fleer paid the Hildebrands in 1994. A third. A third. For 158 cards. They offered me a third of what they got paid in 1994 to do 158 cards. They are aware that, you know, the, the value is not the same as it was back in the 90s, right? I'm not a, I'm not a financial <laughs> analyst or a mathematician. Right. But. Well, basically, I will tell you because I, this is exactly what I did. And, and 41 years, I'm representing artists. And I've never done it before and I've never done it since. They sent me the offer and I called up the art director and I said, well, that's about probably the most offensive thing I've ever seen. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to send you my contract from 1993 Fleer, Marvel Masterpieces. Mm -hmm. And you can tell me what you think. And the art director called me back and she said, I am so embarrassed. So I don't want you to be embarrassed. I didn't expect you to pay me or offer me the same amount because in the 90s the industry was you know fabulous yeah so please don't tell me that you want to pay him so little money to paint not digitally paint right by right hand. he says you know with a stick with horse hair at the end of it okay 158 paintings yeah you want to pay him a third of what he got paid in 93 yeah. so anyhow okay nice wow. seeing you. yeah well, Nice, oh, yes. Thank you. I appreciate that, um, that the extra thing. behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, that's so crazy. And no, it makes total sense why you would say no, no, thank you. I, yeah, you, you have to pay your bills, you know. Absolutely. And, <laughs> you know, you know your worth, you know, and, you know, well, you're, you're being transparent, you're being honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah, like yeah. you're trying to say, oh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold out for more. Like, you're just being realistic. Uh, totally. It's just pragmatic. This is how long yeah. it's going. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's just, long it's just and business. Yeah, money, and I got to make a profit in it. And, you know, it's Absolutely. business. What yeah. it comes down to. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing about this. You know, you have to have a good business as to be successful in this world. In, in I don't care what, where it's at. It's certainly in art. Yeah. You have to. It's not that I have a great business as Gene does, even though I, you know, I did a, much before I met Gene. But nonetheless, you that's that's an awareness you have to have. You have to be yeah. all to work together. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I totally understand and I, I respect your decision. Uh, as a fan, it, it, I'm sad that I will not get to see your work uh relatively soon uh on, on these cards. Yeah. But um well, I, I, I felt I felt bad too because I really wanted to do them. You know, I did. Yeah. I really wanted to do them. Yeah. And, you know, and it, it, yeah, because your your work still appears on um Comic book covers. I still see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the variant. This, yeah. yeah, yeah, the variant. Mar I've done a lot of variants for Marvel. Totally, yeah. And I'm yeah. always like, he's still working. He's still doing stuff. And so yeah. that's why it made me think, like, okay, 
He's probably oh, yeah. going to be doing a trading card thing. He's got to be because, you know, but. Yeah. No, the people think, well, you know, the guy's like 81, you know, is he still working? Obviously. You know what I'm saying? We want to retire, you know what I mean? Retire and do what? Yeah. Paint? <laughs> yeah. You, usually people retire to paint. They don't, you right. know. Exactly. Um, There's no such concept. I don't think yeah. there is with any artist, really. There's no, yeah. you don't think in those terms, you know, you enjoy what you do. It's like, you want to just keep doing it. Yeah. You do it until you can't. That's right. Exactly. Well, Greg, um, I I really appreciate having you here. Uh, I I don't know how to describe. Yeah, I, I really hope uh, you had a good time. And I, you know, fantastic, man. Yeah, oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I um, I'm enthusiastic uh, about this world and art and in in this kind of art. Um, it's a beautiful thing. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is. And then you know, uh, I try to keep the fan version of myself in check because I, you know, uh, obviously <laughs> everyone starts out as a fan. Well, I mean, whether you're I, whether you're the painter or the collector, right? Absolutely, I'm still a fan. I mean, I'm a fan of all kinds of artists' work. You know, I look yeah. at it, it, it. I'm enthused. I'm excited by it. It, yeah. it turns me on. It inspires me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's a great thing. It's a fantastic. Yeah. Thing. And um, I'm very. I think I'm very appreciative of um, your your perspective in wanting to share your work with. Um, you know, uh, people or fans of my generation. Um, oh, good. yes. You know, because I think there's a there's a very large disconnect between, you know, the old guard and the new. You know, and it's they're usually you're only a fan of uh, your yeah. era. Yeah, um, I, well, I'm well, well aware of that. You know, that's the trick is to stay. Not trick. It's not a trick so much as an effort. It's a, it's a concerted uh, a con idea to stay constantly present in, yeah. in, in the world not to right. become something in the past and live right. only off of what you did and all oh, the good old days or some crap you know it's like i'm right here in the moment you know and i'm yeah. excited about what the hell's going on about what other people's work music entertainment film all of it you know it's yeah. it's, it's like i'm you know if you're only thinking about the past you're dead in a sense you know i mean that's that's crazy is i and believe me i love a lot of the past of the old stuff i really sure. do of course it's about it yeah but i love the new stuff i mean there's so many great artists in this in this comic industry now they're freaking fantastic you know and um and that excites me it's a beautiful thing yeah that's um that's really great to hear and i you know i think in the first five to ten minutes i already knew you were pretty cool and then when you uh <laughs> when you said shit i was like okay you're you're my hero now so I don't know. Um, swear on you. Want me to swear? No, on no, no, no. I usually have a thing in the the beginning of the video that says this is not for kids thirteen and under. So don't oh, worry. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I, I can let loose. You know. Especially yeah, yeah. People, you know the costumes that people make. They spend a year on making some of these. Uh, they're they're freaking amazing. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're fantastic. It's a, it's it's a great thing. I enjoy. I love I love conventions. I love interacting with people. Mm -hmm. You know. I love playing with them with the costumes and everything. We just kind of like get out there because I'm still, that's the world I inhabit. I always have since I was a kid, you know, make my own costumes, make my own props, my own makeups and whatever I need to do, you know? Huh. I never would have guessed that you were a cosplayer. Oh, I, way before they called it cosplay, believe me. I made an, Tim and I made an entire T-Rex costume when we were maybe nine years old. My dad he worked in an office supply, so he constantly supplies oh. raw material. Like you had access, paper. yep masking tape and in and all the stuff we needed and we just we taped together this t-rex and you know i made costumes up the kazoo i don't know how many frankenstein monsters and wolfmans and you name it i mean I yeah. robots and, and aliens martians and tons of them you know yeah and, and in fact that's what i do with the work it all that merges yeah and we do here with the you know with the with the uh comic stuff and, and all the other i make my own costumes i need to yeah you know yeah. to props and everything like that you know mm -hmm. sculpt clay dragons and whatnot no I, it's 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 like i i i love and, and and all this comes back to my mother who basically raised tim and me with and this is and this is in the 40s in, in a blue collar world you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and, and they were really unique to both of them my parents and my mom raised us with this concept of your imagination is the most valuable thing you have. Because I'm never satisfied with anything I do. I say, oh, right, that's horrible. And well, that's what separates those who keep moving forward and those who throw in the towel, so to speak. 
those who quit. You know what I mean? You're, you're your own worst critic. Oh, I can't get it. I can't get it. Ah, oh, I quit. Or that's not good enough. I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Well, you're never good enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You, but you, just, you stay on the track and you keep at it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but it's also good to have more than your set of eyes on something. Absolutely. So Tim and I, my, my mother was always a great critic of my work. She wouldn't just praise it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and then good. Tim and I, Tim and I were always pushing. Oh, I'm each. sure you guys were ripping on each other. Yeah. Well, it wasn't like negative. It was like con. We would one guy would freak out because he couldn't get what it was he was trying to get and quit and throw it all in the corner and have a tirade, and, mm. and quit. And then I would pull, say, if it was Tim, I would say, "All right, well, I'm going to quit. If you quit, I quit." You know, we would bounce off oh, each other that way. Yeah, yeah. But we would also turn each other on, you know, mm -hmm. and. I still do that gene. I depend. Jean is an artist. She's my wife now, but she's been my business manager and she's an artist and she had her own publishing company. She's a creative person and it's always good. She'll come in and look at a painting or something I'm working on and say, well, this here, you know, you, you, that, 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 whatever that may be. Yeah. And your instant reaction and still, I've talked to other artists about the same kind of thing too, is get defensive. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. You get defensive. And then she leaves, and then I look at it, and we're right. <laughs> like, dang, she's right. <laughs> I really appreciate having you here. I hope to be able to chat with you again at some point in the future. Anytime. Uh, yeah. Anytime. I, really, I really enjoyed having you here, and I hope uh, you did too. Thank you. I enjoyed a hell of it. Awesome. I, I really okay. did. And please tell Jean it was, it was great. Mm -hmm. I would love to have her on too. Uh, she's great. She's great yeah. to talk. She, I'm sure. I'm sure she's got a lot of stories. She's got a lot of stories. Got a lot of stories. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, Greg, take care. Tell her thank you, and uh, I'll see you soon. Very good, man. All right, Adios. take care. Bye.